Hi, I'm Nikki Freed with Associated Crafts and Wallet Hauser, and today we're going to do a virtual interview with a church loan expert himself, President John Berardino with Griffin Capital Funding. Let's get started. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and jump right into it. We've got some questions today, and I'm really excited to hear some of your answers. Um, let's see here. Question number one I have, um, very basic, but very important. What is Griffin Capital Funding? We are one of the largest church financing companies in the USA. Uh, we've been in operation for over 20 years. On average, we close over $100 million in loans to churches on an annual basis. In the past 20 years, we've closed over $1.5 billion in loans to churches. Uh, we do loans that are related to real estate primarily, almost solely. So purchase, refinance, renovation, which is what you guys are probably most interested in, and then construction loans, again, something that you guys would likely be involved in if somebody were building a new church and wanted to put in your beautiful windows. So we finance projects that use real estate as collateral. Uh, we do loans for churches from the smallest $50,000 all the way up to the many, many millions. The largest individual loan we've done for one church, one loan uh, was $25.5 million. The average loan for a church that we do is $1 million, and we do loans for churches almost anywhere in the U.S. Um, generally, a lot of times we would look at a project for you guys when a church wanted to go through some form of beautification, either they're adding stained glass windows uh, as a part of some other larger project that they're doing, or uh, maybe they are renovating their property and looking to refurbish the beautiful windows and having you guys do that one. Um, so say someone um, fills out the application, how do they qualify for the loan? So different loans have different qualifications. So uh, the easiest way to explain it is this. We do what's called risk-based pricing. What that means is the stronger the transaction, the better the interest rates and loan terms that the church has to choose from. The weaker a church is, the less uh, options we will offer them. So we will do loans for churches that are in foreclosure and in bankruptcy and having those sort of issues. Now, I doubt a church in that situation would be coming to you to have their windows done. So, you know, that's kind of a bit of a mute point with you guys, but I'm just mentioning it so that you know that we do all sorts of things. But churches with very good credit are going to get exceptionally good pricing. And these loans almost never have personal guarantees. So a loan could be for as little as five years, or it could be for as long as 30 years, um, just depending on the situation on what the church wanted to do and how their risk profile uh, shaped out. So once the person is applied, uh, maybe accepted, is there another step to securing that loan? So sure. So securing the loan is with the collateral itself. So this would be a normal church real estate transaction, meaning we would go and close through whatever the process in that state, whatever the process is in the state where the church is located. That's the process we're going to follow. In some places, they would close at a regular title company. At other states, they might close at attorney's office. Um, but it would be something close to them and convenient for them. Um, what, what are the fees and the interest rates associated with these loans? And, and in the future, do you see them rising? Like, do you, How does it affect our economy right now? Well, you know, it's worth having this conversation just to put a little bit of time stamp on it so that people who may watch in the future have some uh, kind of relevant idea of when we're talking. So today it's December 1st. 2000 or 2020, and uh, interest rates are exceptionally good. That doesn't mean that they will last this way forever, and they certainly won't. 
these things come and go in cycles, and we absolutely think that interest rates will start to climb up. We just don't know when. Could be later on this year. Uh, could be 2022. Uh, we just don't know. But right now, rates are very good. Um, interest rates can start in the threes for a strong church, uh, for an average church in an average location. They could be in the mid fours to low fives for a church that maybe struggled with some payments. Uh, or had some other issues, you might have interest rates in the sevens or eights. Uh, those are kind of some good good ballpark figures. But an average church is going to be in the kind of 4 to 5% range. Interesting. Okay, perfect. And then are, are there any prepayment penalties? There can be, depending on the loan type. So... There can be an average kind of payment penalty is uh, 1% for the first three years of the loan, nothing after that. Uh, but there can be other things. It can be 3% in year one, 2% in year two, 1% in year three, and nothing after that. So it does simply depend on, again, location, strength of transaction, amount of money being borrowed, uh, loan to value, kind of all the underwriting metrics that we look at. Okay. So the next question that I had for you, there may be some other companies out there that possibly offer um, similar services to Griffin Capital. Uh, what sets Griffin Capital apart from the other businesses? Risk-based pricing. So generally what happens when you go to a traditional lender like a bank, they look at it and they say yes or no. If it's a yes, then you're going to get whatever their pricing is. If it's a no, then it's just a no. It didn't meet whatever their credit criteria were. We have a much wider credit box um, because we do risk-based pricing. So not everybody gets the same price, but that also allows us to be more flexible. That doesn't mean that everyone can qualify for a loan. I don't mean to say that. Not every church that uh, you send to us is going to qualify for a loan, but it makes our credit box much bigger. And this is all we do. Uh, we've done this for 20 years. Uh, we don't do car loans. We don't do home loans. We do loans for churches. We understand the market very well, and uh, we know how to close the transactions, and we do a ton of them. We only have a few questions left, but I thought this one was um, a very, very important question. Um, so a lot of churches, a lot of our clients right now are probably experiencing some economic decline, um, lots of things going on, you know, related to, you know, with COVID or just in general. Um I think a lot of these churches are hesitant to extend themselves financially um, during this time. What would your uh, advice be or your thoughts um, to to these churches? Well, you know, I understand the hesitation, uh, number one. But we want to have a space that is beautiful and that is inviting to our members. and. You know, keeping the deferred maintenance to a minimum, improving your curb appeal, which obviously Willett Houser does. Those things add not only value to the building, but they also add value to the experience. They add value to uh, getting uh, people to bring other members or other potential members to church with them. When we have pride of ownership uh, in our things and in our house, it shows. So I understand the hesitation, but at the same time, it's not as though these churches are shutting down. So we, we want to be careful, I believe anyway, in, Personally, I believe that we should be careful uh, not being stuck in the no man's home. What I mean by that is that we're neither in the process of committing to our building 
nor in the process of committing to do nothing. We just don't know what to do. We walk by the lawn that hasn't been mowed. We walk by the, the windows that are dirty. Right? We, it's not as though we don't see them. We just don't do anything about them because we don't know what to do. Well, I would recommend that pastors pray and determine what is important to them and, and really what adds value and curb appeal uh, to their buildings because the virus is not going to last forever. We know that. We may not know when the end will be, but it is not going to last forever. So when things do open fully back up, and in some states they already are opening up, well, we want to be ready with a nice, clean building that's inviting to get our members back. Because I think at the end of the day, at least, you know, for me, I talk to pastors all day, every day, much like you guys do. Well, they want to be open. You know, they don't want to continue on with Facebook meetings and with Zoom calls and all the other sort of stuff. They want the fellowship and they want uh, the members back at church and and they want to build their churches back the way they were. So I would say that uh, although I understand caution, I also think it's important to remember that curb appeal is an important part of why people choose to visit our church to begin with. They may stay for other reasons, right? You can't just have beautiful windows and, and a message that doesn't deliver. You do need both. But it is hard to have people visit your church if you don't have nice curb appeal. So going from from that, if I'm if I'm a potential client and I'm interested in applying for your loan, uh, where where do I go to apply, and what would be the process with the point of contacts? So we have a special process for your company, so that we can track and make sure that you're getting specialized service. So um, we have an application that your that your team has. It's one page. It takes only two minutes to complete. And in essence, all you do is you give that to the pastor they f or to whomever you're meeting with at the church. They fill that out and then they send it back with the last three years of the church's profit and loss statements and balance sheets. That's it. We don't pull people's credit reports. We don't uh, need uh, bank statements. We don't need uh, tax returns. Again, the loans don't have personal guarantees, so the credit of the pastor is unimportant. Uh, that's a question I often get or used to get anyway as an analyst years ago. The pastors would always say, well, I don't make any money and I don't have any credit. You know, how is my church going to get a loan? Well, the answer is their credit and their income is not important. So don't worry about it. You know, we're going to get you, we're going to get you a loan if we can based solely on the church itself. And once someone has sent in the application, does someone from your team contact them? Yeah, they sure will. So someone, one of the analysts will call the church, discuss the request with them, answer any questions they have. Uh, ask them any questions that they that they have based on the financial statements and the application. And usually that whole process takes only one day. So usually we'll be able to give the church an answer as to what we can do, again, in one business day with just that information. And let me mention here, um, there are going to be some questions you're going to get. For instance, churches are going to say, well, I already have a loan on my building. What do I do now? Well, realistically, what we're going to look to do is to refinance the loan they have currently and give them enough cash to do whatever they're looking to do. So say they're uh, buying windows from you and they also want new carpeting and they're going to paint the facade or whatever the things are. We're going to give them cash to do all of those things and refinance their loan. The real win is when we can refinance the loan at an interest rate that's low enough to pay for 
the work they're doing with you and whatever else they want to have done. So by way of example, let's say that the church is paying, and, and we see these kind of rates, church is paying them all the time. Let's say the church is paying an 8% interest rate. Well, they come to us, their current outstanding balance is, let's pretend, $500,000. We analyze it, we say, look, we love you. Your church is strong, it's in a good location. We want to make a loan to you. We are going to give you an interest rate of 4.5%. Let's say 4% for ease of math. Well, that's going to drop their interest expense by 4% times 500,000 equals 20,000 per year. So over time, that's going to be more than enough money to pay for the windows, the painting of the facade, the new carpet, whatever it is they were having done. So that's an ideal super win type of scenario where we step in, we save them so much money that it ends up paying for what they want to have done anyway. Another scenario is that we step in and we say, all right, your interest rate is already good. We're going to give you cash out to do what you want to do and leave your interest rate the same it is now or similar to it, meaning that they already had a good rate. We can't reduce their rate, but we can give them more cash out. Um, there are instances where maybe they got a loan uh, from a member of their congregation. We see this sometimes where the rate is 1% or even 0%. You know, we've seen that where they're not paying any interest. They just pay back the principal to some member. Okay, that can be a little tougher because obviously we can't give them loan to a church at 0%. So it can be hard to beat that. Um, you know, so there are scenarios where maybe we might have to do, a, a, have a little conversation with the pastor and the leadership about what that looks like and what their new payment would be. But again, we still would love to be there and love to be your partner in those conversations. Um, that, I think this entire interview clarified a lot of questions and concerns. Um, for a lot of, you know, existing and potential clients. So um, I'm so glad I got to meet with you today. And once again, what I'll probably do is I'll include a screen recording of how someone can go on our website and fill out that application and get that sent over, as well as any um, contact information if someone has any uh, further questions. If I may, Nikki, I'd like to give you on this call my cell phone number Please, any of your reps that have a question or have a pastor that they would just like to throw on the phone with me, they can three-way call me, or they can just simply give them my uh, my name and number. I'm available till late into the evening. Um, so we're here as a real partner for your company to help you make sales. Uh, and my analysts work on the weekends. We don't work on Sundays. but uh, uh, all the way through Saturday and late into the evening. So we'll be here when you are there visiting your churches. And even on Sundays, if you've got a special meeting where you're meeting with a church board, as they sometimes do on Sundays after their mass, you know, just schedule it ahead of time. Say, I need somebody uh, to be available Sunday at 2, and we will make it happen for you. Uh, my cell phone number is area code 703. Eight six three five five six six again seven zero three eight six three five five six six. Excellent. Nick, thank you. I thank really you. appreciate the opportunity to serve your clients and uh, appreciate the opportunity to to have the interview with you. I'll be sure to include your contact information uh, when I publish this video. Thank you so much for meeting with me today, and hope to talk again soon. I look forward to it. Thanks a million. Have a great day. You too.